You've seen it all over YouTube. It's that outline photo effect where you cut someone out or an object out of the thumbnail. Maybe you blow it up a little bit. You put a little white outline. There's a big old gradient in the background, something like that. I'm gonna show you how to do that in Photoshop if you're looking to create some trendy YouTube thumbnails. So let's open up Photoshop and get started. I'm gonna hit create new and for YouTube thumbnails, what I always do is 1920, not 19,000, 1920 by 1080. That's kind of your standard HD resolution. RGB color mode, that might be an advanced option. It just depends on, uh, no, actually it's probably not. Anyway, moving on. All right, so we got this 1920 by 1080 document. I need to bring in my photo that I'm gonna use. So I just literally screen grabbed um, a thumbnail from my video. I'm gonna go down to file, place embedded. This is my screenshot. I'm gonna hit place and it's gonna place it in here. So I've got some, uh, some different things from the video itself inside of here that I don't want. So I'm just gonna scale this up by holding Alt or Option until I don't have those pieces in my video anymore. So I can click that and drag that down. So this is what we're gonna be looking at here and I'm gonna be basically cutting myself out of this video. This is a little video that we shot for Pacers Gaming uh, just recently. Not released yet, but soon to be. All right, so I'm gonna grab the pin tool and that is shortcut key P, it's down here in your toolbar. I'm gonna make sure that up here in the modes, it's set to path. And then I'm just gonna trace around whatever I want to cut out. So it helps to zoom in a little bit here. That's command or control plus and minus. And I'm gonna start at the edge of my document and I'm just gonna create these uh, straight lines by clicking out here with my pen tool and just tracing around my object. Now you can click and drag to create rounded uh, lines here if you want. You can be as detailed or as not detailed as you want with this. Now, just a quick note here, and I'm going around the wrong part, but a quick note here, it really doesn't, if it's a thumbnail, it doesn't matter that much. You can go pretty quickly. Just make sure you're following the contours of your person or object fairly well, and it's gonna turn out all right. So as we just kind of click around this, we're just trying to stay on the outside or slightly inside of our object. Around the face is when it probably matters potentially the most, but as we just click around the outline, um, we're s essentially we're just gonna create this sort of cutout of our person. Now I might speed this part up just to get through it, but all I'm doing is clicking with my pen tool. And you can, I mean, just like I said before, I'm being a little bit lazy, but you can click and round the edges if you want. We're gonna cut right through this seat belt I'm gonna go all the way to the edge here. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit and see what we have left. I might wanna cut in a little bit here uh, where you can see underneath my arm. And then we're just gonna click all the way outside and complete that shape or that path uh, by clicking on our first point. So we've got me cut out. And what we need to do is open up our paths uh, dialog window. You can go down to window paths to pop that up. And we have this working path if we click this selection icon here, it's gonna create a selection out of that path. Now it's possible that it creates the selection reverse from what you want. That's okay, I'll show you how to fix that here in a second. So what we wanna do here is go ahead and make sure our layer is selected that we wanna chop this out of and go down to the create mask button. As long as that selection is selected, it's gonna create a mask based on that selection. Now one thing we didn't do that I'm gonna do right now is hold Alt or Option, click and drag to duplicate this layer. And on this bottom layer, I'm going to right click on that mask and just delete it. So now we actually have a mask uh, and the background, which we can then create some more separation in, uh, in, our, in our thumbnail here. All right, so we've got this mask set up. And what I wanna show you here is if you hit Command or Control I, it's gonna flip or invert that mask. So if I hide the bottom layer, you see I either have a complete cutout or I have the person cut out. That might be how your mask comes in. So I wanted to show you how to invert that. But we just want the person cut out. Okay, so enough talk. What we wanna do now is double click in this empty space of our layer. That's gonna open up our layer styles. And we just wanna add a stroke to this guy. 
and I'm gonna bump up the size, change the color to white, and then what I would do is make sure the position is outside, but if center or even inside works better for you, use those. Just, just play around with that to see exactly how it affects your image. I'm gonna keep it outside, and I'm gonna maybe scale this down a little bit to something maybe like 15. And so we can hit OK on that. Now we wanna create a little bit more separation. So you remember I added this second layer down here and that's gonna be the background layer. I can add in other adjustment layers here, like for instance, we could just do hue and saturation and do like a colorize so that now the background is, is some sort of color, like a hot pink color and we can add whatever saturation and brightness we want to it. Um, if we make it a little bit darker, my silhouette might show up a little bit better. The other thing we can do, I'm still underneath here in the original image, but as long as we scale me up, it's, it's gonna cover up uh, my original underneath. So I can take this top layer, Command or Control T to transform. I'm gonna zoom out a little so I can kind of scale it out a little bit more. If you hold Shift these days, it's gonna skew it. So no more holding Shift, just hold Option or Alt unless you're in an older version. And you can sort of scale up this picture and you can move it around. Just make sure you're covering up your original for the most part. And we could do something like that. Hit enter and you've got your outlined picture effect right here. Add some text and you've got yourself a trendy YouTube thumbnail. I don't know if I explained that perfectly well, but I hope that I did. The other thing you can do, you can create any color outline that you want. Um, and you can add in those layer styles, there's other effects in there. There's glows, there's inner shadows, there's also drop shadow. You can add a drop shadow to it if you really want to. Uh, there's all sorts of effects you can stack on top of there to really make that part of your image stand out. I hope this was quick and easy for you. This is exactly the method that I use to create thumbnails for Pacers Gaming. Um, you notice I cut it out really quickly. If you're an orthodox pen tool user, sure, you can use the handles and round it off, but quite frankly, when it's a thumbnail and it's only going to be this big, it's not that big of a deal. Just get it done. Speed is sometimes more important. All right, you guys, I'm Spencer from Pixel and Bracket, and I will see you all in the next one. Woo! I almost stopped that tutorial halfway through. I might have to edit it a little bit. You guys won't know because I already edited it, but uh, I, feel, I felt like I was getting a little bit, actually I was getting distracted by my phone. I think, uh, I think I was getting some different notifications on here. And then I thought that I wasn't explaining it very well, but I don't know. Let me know down below if, if you have any questions.